Hi, Happy New Year. <laughs> I've got the music going on. Oops, that's what I need to do. I need to turn that down. Hi, Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you're all having a wonderful New Year so far. Um, we in Michigan have been getting a lot of snow. I think we've got 12 inches. One of those pictures that went through was a stool that's outside on the back porch that, like, is... It was this way, it should have been that way, but that was the end of yesterday's snow, and I think we've got another five or six inches. Um, Grand Rapids is kind of over here on the west side over by Lake Michigan, so we get a lot of lake effect snow, um, although I think that like Wisconsin and Minnesota probably are drowning in snow at this point. I don't know, but because I got a lot of snow, I was able to get a lot done for what I wanted to show you this time because things got canceled because there was so much snow. Um, so first of all, I want to show you the quilt behind me. Now, I know that normally I'm showing you Sue's fabric because we're going to be talking about Sue Penn, her fabric, and her new stencil line, okay? So this is a quilt that because of all the snow we got, I was able to get done, which was really very exciting. So today is Thursday. I started painting these on Tuesday afternoon, evening, painted more yesterday, and then decided, well, I've got everything painted and I don't got anything else going on because I can't go anywhere because there's so much snow, I should make something. And so I made this quilt. Now, later on, I'm going to show you how I did that in electric quilt. So those of you that might be interested in electric quilt, you'll be able to see that a little bit. But this is it finished. And what makes these particular stencils I'm going to talk to you about a little bit different is that it actually creates an item. Whereas typically I'm talking to you about layers and layers and layers and you get this kind of all over layered look. With this particular set I'm going to show you, there's the one of them in particular, well two of them, let's say two of them, that are going to give you these long pieces and then also this circle flower with the leaf. All right. So I do want you to know that in the links below are links to some videos that Sue did using these videos, but doing it on canvas. Um, so be sure that you take a look at that below. So let me see who we have here. Northwestern Alberta. Do you guys get lots of snow too? Mary, I hope that you don't have any snow at all. And oh my goodness, I'm not sure where you're from, but you're from somewhere in a Slavic nation. Oh my goodness. Um, and hello, Tennessee. Although I did hear Alabama got snow. So everybody's gotten a lot of it. And I'll bet, I'll bet Kimberly's got some snow in New York too. So it started coming down. It's winter. I love winter because I love Michigan and you can't live in Michigan unless you love winter. It's kind of like a requirement that you have to have. So please be sure to give me any comments if there's any questions that you have or anything. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to cover everything that I want to cover because there's a lot going on. So before I show you what I've been working on, I want you to see the fabric that Sue Penn had already designed. Okay, so bring in my camera. This is Sue Penn's collection from the fabric company Free Spirit. And if you've been a quilter for any length of time, then you know about Free Spirit. Really high quality, top of the line um, teachers. And Sue, Sue told me the other day that when she went to market to first show some of her artwork to Free Spirit, I don't know who the lady is, but of course she loved her, which, okay, I can't even imagine that you don't love Sue. And when you guys meet her, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. Um, and the lady said, we want you to be a designer because you're a Free Spirit too. And Sue talks about not on this particular piece, but there's a um, video that you can see on, I think it's on Free Spirit's website, or if you just type in Sue Penn Fabric Design, you'll see it, where she describes some of the processes that she does. Now, this one is called Flourish, and Flourish is the three stencils that we're going to look at. In particular, it has the circles, it has the leaves, and this particular print doesn't have it, but it does have some long things that are a little bigger than this. Now, I want to show you on this piece that it actually, this is the bottom of it. There it is. These are the other pieces that are in it. Now, I put this up on my wall when I was doing the stenciling because I wanted to be inspired by what Sue had made. So you're going to find some things that are similar. One of the things we're going to talk about is how she made her background. Now, she'll show you that in that little video if you want to do it on canvas but we want to be able to make ours into quilts. At least I want to make mine into quilts. Maybe you want to paint on canvas, which is awesome. Go for it. I want to be able to make quilts. So the way that she does this background on canvas is very paint heavy, very acrylic-y, very textury 
you can't do that if you ever plan on cutting it and sewing through it. So just keep that in mind. I came up with another way to do that. And it took me quite a while. I mean, I dreamed and dreamed and dreamed. How am I going to do this with the stencil? And you'll understand. Um, and I think I came up with something that was pretty darn cool, if I say so myself. Um, good day. You're having a heat wave in Queensland, Australia. Um, yeah, probably in Melbourne, too. Um, yeah, you guys are like the opposite of us. Heat wave, that's so cute. Um, and then Connecticut, I believe you guys are getting some snow right about now also. Everybody's enjoying such fun weather. Isn't it fun? Okay, so these are the three stencils that we're going to talk about today. These are the ones that I talked about last time. This was spotty. This was the large mandala, the small mandala, and the tree. And those were what I worked with last time. I have not made a quilt with those because I didn't have a snow day. These ones, I got the quilt done already. So this is the mandala that goes with um, the Flourish collection. And it's actually called Starburst One. So, And I put it on black fabric this time so you could see it. Aren't I brilliant? So let me take that off and scooch it over there. And then the second one is actually a four-part stencil, okay? Oops, this should technically be this away. Um, so when it comes to you, it'll come to you kind of like a full eight and a half by 11, and you'll just cut the little tabs that are cutting them apart because you'll see, and then the ones that Sue did, and what I'll do is that some of them, so this one, oops, going this way, it actually fits on um, perfectly with this one so you get that little inset. The hearts do not do that. The hearts you use a little bit differently than that. And I did use the hearts, but I really like those leaves a little bit better. And the last one and the final one is the one that kind of gave me a little bit of trouble with design. I was like, how am I going to use it? Now, when you see how Sue uses it, she uses these to just draw through. And then she, again, with the acrylic paint, paints it but it's really then very thick. We can't do that. Now, I did think that in future, I could definitely use this for if I needed to cut out something that was a perfect circle, if I needed to cut out some different leaves. This was very, very fun too. I really enjoyed using that in it. So I came up with a way to do it. Keep in mind, just like before, if you go to below the description, you're gonna find a code or a link that is going to take you to Sue's Etsy store. And when you use that link and that code, which is Nancy10, I think, I think it's Nancy10, you are going to get 10% off everything on her Etsy site. And that includes some of her fabric collections, but definitely the stencils. There are seven stencils. You can buy them as a kit and save a little bit or otherwise. Hi, Georgia. How's the weather out there on your side of the lake? So here is a few things that I've already made in preparations, just some kind of backgrounds. This is just a full one of that starburst. Oh, this is just kind of, I picked up some little bits, just little bits of things. This was kind of my version of that background where she'll actually do like painting this way. And I did it with a brayer on this one. This is one that I've just got prepared. Um, the dots, see them little dots? You know how I did that? With bubble wrap. This is like the, I've never had a bubble wrap like this where these are not even circles. They're kind of elongated bubbles. Um, was very, very cool. Love bubble wrap. It's one of, um, anybody using a gel press is gonna, you're always gonna love bubble wrap. Here's another background, so getting ready. This is was my attempt to do the kind of painting back and forth like she does. It did not work. I tried doing it from here onto the jelly plate and it just, didn't work. It didn't pick up. I wasn't moving fast enough. Hello, Kentucky, and hello, Constance in Oklahoma. You guys might be getting snow. Keep in mind when I'm talking to you about what I'm using, this is what I'm using. This is the Gel Press brand. You can purchase all of these, the brayers, and the not the paints I'm going to use today, but the paints I normally use, which are the um, Dilutions paints, all in the links below. Okay. Plus, there's lots of stencils available at Joggles, too, but we're talking about Sue today. Um, yep, you're not too late, Sarah. You're just on time. So I'm going to be using today the 12 by 14, which is the big one. Um, I believe this is the first one you bought, Georgia. It was the only one we had in the warehouse when you purchased it the first time at Joggles. But there is the 8 by 10, 12 by 12. There is a 9 by 11 that's very nice, too. But this is the brand that I'm going to be using. Here's some more. Now, this one, as you can see, like compared to, you know, maybe this one, 
this guy has a nice base and he's ready to be built on. This guy, I've already done some layering. Um, and I'm going to do the painting right on directly onto these. But I used the mandalas from last time. I happen to have used some of my brand new Li Liquitex spray paint on this. Love it. I cannot believe how fabulously it works. I don't know that I'll be using that today, but I did use that last time, and I'm sure I'll be using it a lot more. I used the Starburst from this particular collection. Hello, Sarah, all the way from England. Thank you very much. I wish I could speak in a British accent. Bill would be thrilled if I could do that, but I can't. I, I fail. Um, I think I can speak in a Kentucky accent if I really have to. All right. And here's another background, again, ready. This is one where I put the, um, the leftovers of stencils onto the plate and then picked it all up with a blue and a white combination. Here's just another couple ones. This one, again, picked that one up. These two are so fabulous, and I wish that you could see them in real life. These are the ones that I put on the plate, let it completely dry, and then covered the plate with a silver iridescent. This is... So, so cool. Now, I probably will do some painting on it, but honestly, I think they are so gorgeous just like this. I might not. I, I'm in love with this piece. I might not actually even be able to sell it because usually I get around to selling them at some point. This is one that is about 80% mm, done, and I'll be able to show you how to finish that, so we're going to put that over here. This is one that got done, and then I didn't have a space for it in the quilt behind me. So for the quilt behind me, I'll talk to you a little bit more about it, but I took my piece, I trimmed it down, and then I added about two inches of black fabric all around them. Then I trimmed the entire block down to something divisible by two. So in this case, it was 14 and a half, because we're quilters, we know we need to add a seam allowance, and 16 and a half. And Sue Penn is here, you guys. So I just see the thing. Sue Penn just wrote. Sue is actually here watching us. Hi, Sue. I love you. Um, I'm going to go and visit Sue. So in a couple of weeks, I am. I told a few of you that I was going to be going to Sue's studio back in Thanksgiving, but it just didn't work out. Family things happen and blah, 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 blah. So the other day we were talking and, well, she does some stuff on Facebook and I want her to start doing stuff on YouTube so that you guys can see easily what she's doing without having to search up. Um, and so I'm going to go to her house in a couple of weeks and we're going to, I'll do a live from there. I promise I will. I'll probably do a recording from there. And then we're going to do a couple of recordings for Sue so that she can really start ramping up her YouTube channel. And I told her that I swear lots and lots of my viewers will want to watch her YouTube videos, right? Right. I know that you want to. Okay. All right. Back to work. Okay, overhead. Hi, Sue. I'm so glad you're here. All right, so this is the one that I did. I, then I trimmed it to 14 and a half by 16 and a half, and the little squares in the quilt are actually all cut two and a half, so everything fits together. Okay, so let's put this guy way out of the way. I'm going to put these guys over here somewhere because I'll probably use them. This is the 8 by 10 plate. Now, this is the plate that I have been just adding a little bit of stuff to, you know, the stencil that has stuff on top. Now, this, I tell you all the time that at the end of my painting sessions, I always put another layer of fab paint down to pick up everything that is on the plate, and then it comes out crystal clear. But the problem is, is that you really have to leave it there for a little bit of time. I'm talking like a half hour or so. So this one, I finished this probably an hour ago so that I could show you what it's like when I peel it up. So, and it really is kind of, I don't know, it's not stuck to the base, but it is holding on pretty well. And when I peel it off, I kind of go all the way around it, trying to get as much of the paint up as possible because that is the idea, trying to clean off the plate. And this usually gives me my favorite types of ones. So you can see a little bit of it isn't coming up. That's okay. That's called layers. I'm all right with that. You know, I can fill it in with something, right? And this is the one that I did with the brayer to kind of get that painterly effect that Sue gets when she's doing her backgrounds. And this has turned out very, very cool indeed. Uh, come up there, little guy. There. All right. Oh, 
Okay, it's not hard to get up. I just get it up gently. So this is one that is similar to how Sue makes her backgrounds. Um, and I use the brayer, and I think I'll be able to do that a little bit for you here too. Some of it where the paint might have been too thick, that's why it's stuck. But that's okay. I can add layers to this. All right, so let's put this over here. I've got so many different things going on. All right, so I'm going to start. But before I start, I'm going to show you the silliest thing ever. I watch a lot of people's um, gel press tutorials. They all do it on fabric, on paper. Um, my favorite is Elizabeth St. Hillier. I love her. Um, but there's one lady out there that does it with her brayer. And then she was showing how one day she got the paint to peel off her brayer. And I have tried for months to figure out how to do it. And I finally got one to work. It just all of a sudden I could start peeling it. And it's just the layer upon layer upon layer of paint. You know, sometimes I actually, there's a little jiggy right there. Oh, well. Sometimes I, you know, scrape it off or I kind of roll it off. But I never clean them, for heaven's sakes. Um, so this is what happens when you don't. And then sooner or later, somebody had told me to soak it in Murphy's oil soap. I couldn't do that because due to COVID, for some reason, we couldn't find any Murphy's oil soap. But all of a sudden today it peeled off. So now I have an almost like super clean brayer, which is really very exciting. And for those of you that are mixed media artists, I'm sure that you could find something to do with this paint skin, right? Right? I know you could. All right. So let's get started. So I'm going to leave that gold on there. I'm fine with that. And we're going to start by trying to make one of those bases like Sue did, doing it a different way so that we're able to get um, kind of that coverage. So the idea is I'm going to take my palette knife and just over here on this um, gel press plate, I'm going to put a dollop, a dollop, and I am going to try to wipe off my palette knife between each um, layer. And I know that you know that I know that you know that I have some problems for getting to do that sometimes, and that's why my paint gets all mixed up. I want the colors to be maybe reds and blues. All right, probably put too much on of that one. I am using the Jacquard Lumiere and Liquitex. This is a very large jar. So this is Jacquard's Lumiere. Um, because, again, I have not unpacked my dilutions. <laughs> I'll get around to it, I promise. Just got things going on, you know. All right, I'll try not to put too much paint on. I do have to work rather quickly, though, which is kind of hard when you're doing this kind of thing. And then I want to use a little bit of gold. Yeah. Um, the one thing Sue says that I want you all to remember when you're doing your painting like this, or honestly, even when you're quilting, I think even in life, play. Just play. Do, you know, just, just have a good time and play. That's what this is all about. This is not about perfection. Wouldn't know what that looked like if it even hit me in the face. So I'm not going to start trying to do perfect when I am painting or quilting. All right. So now for this, after showing you how to clean off your other brayer, this is my two-inch brayer. Again, the brayers are available at joggles.com. And I'm going to take the brayer, roll a little bit on, and I'm just going to roll it into sections, trying to stay with at least like I'm going to stick with the red here for a little bit going to kind of move sort of fast, going to try to anyway, and get as much paint on here. I want this to really get covered so I can try to pick it all up. Now, I also don't want there to be big bob blobs of paint. I want it to be ish smooth because the big blobs are the thing that don't come off. Oops, there's a little oogie up there. Get out of there, oogie. Okay. All righty. A little bit of the red. Now that I've got most of the reds on, I'm going to wipe off my palette a little bit and come back in here and pick up some of this super cool metallic blue. Try not to get too much of the red in it. I'm failing. Yes, I see that you can see that I am failing with that. It's getting a little bit more red in it than I want. Now, I did kind of do this one. If you ever watched the stained glass paintings that I did, I did ones that sort of had a stained glass-ishness to it. Um, and that's how I did this. But I didn't do it on such a big plate. And I got to tell you, working on the big plate, trying to cover all of this with paint and moving fast enough 
that you're, I'm going to be able to pick it up is a little bit more difficult. All right, got a few more to go here. Going to go with the dark blue now. Do, 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 do. Um, okay. A little bit more blue. I want to get it in these gaps so that I can end with... Get more red on that one. Whoops. And then I smeared it with the... Okay, okay. My, my plan has thwarted me again. That's an Athena word. I've been thwarted. All right, now I'm going to clean that off. Over here on the side, I've got a piece of Decker Bond that I'm wiping this off on that I can, at some point in time, use for a fusible applique. And I'm going to take this and just kind of grab wherever I see that there's no paint. I'm going to try and put a little bit of the gold because it gives it, a, I like it, it gives it a little bit of a spark. Now on the big one that Sue does, it's an ombre where it starts with one color and then goes to another. But this one, I just got it kind of going a little all over. All right, now where I see there are big blobbles of things, that's a Nancy word. I think I just created it. Okay, it's not a bobble, it's not a blob, it's a blobble. All right. Okay, so that is now covered. Now I'm going to take I'm going to actually take two pieces of fabric only because then my hands don't get quite as um, painty. What kind of paint am I using? Um, I just showed you that. This is the Jacquard Liquitex paint. So screw that on so I don't pour the whole thing out. There it is. Jacquard Lumiere, Jacquard Liquitex. I also use Dilusions, which is readily available. Um, the Liquitex is just a little harder to find, honestly, only because Barb doesn't carry it at Joggles.com. Whereas if you look at Joggles, you can see the um, Dilusions. If you follow that, that's what I usually use, but that paint is incognito right now. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to lightly smear this over. This is going to just be another mix. And grab a piece of paper fabric for that. So if you are just tuning in, this is just high quality muslin. I do not use any um, fabric medium unless I want to. Sometimes I want to because I want to be able to um, play a little bit longer. And if I were just, yeah, it won't work for this because I'd have to mix it each time. So I should have used my dilutions because those sometimes I'll just mix the fabric medium right into the bottle and then it's already set for me. Oh, that's a good idea, Nancy. Jeepers creepers. Why didn't you think of that earlier? All right. So that one's stuck down and I'm going to peel it up. And some of it dried. Yep. The teal didn't come up quite right. Yep, the teal, I think the one teal I put down in early on, you can see that it got stuck back down because I didn't leave it down enough. All right. So that's kind of the idea for getting a base similar to what Sue did. And I could fix the other parts up that came out. Let me put this over there. Let me grab... Uh, let me grab... Sorry, I'm over here on those little ones that I first just did. I want to show you what I can do to make those work on the one there. Okay. Duh. Jeepers. Okay. So I'm going to take this one up now. So again, just a nice coverage of a lot of different color going on. And these are some dark bases, which was a little different for me using dark bases. Normally, I think that I use more light things. Now, I want to get something started on here because then I'm going to put some fabric down that we're going to be able to start working on. I think anyway. No. All right. I want to show you now how we can put some of the um, stencil work, the sunburst, on a piece like this. So I'm going to put that over here. Now, I've got that green going on, so maybe I'm going to use... Uh, this dark blue. All right, so this again is a Liquitex dark blue. This is textile. Textile doesn't have any sheen to it. So when I want something that doesn't have shine to have shine, because anything without shine needs to have an idea. Just an idea, sometimes when I'm doing fabric painting, I use a bright solid fabric on the base instead of muslin, which is so true because then you eliminate the very first thing that you have to do because it's already colored. So this is Liquitex iridescent medium. 
iridescent medium link there is no link below because i don't think that um joggles carries it although there might be maybe she does probably put more in there than i needed but what i'm going to do is add that to the regular blue and that is going to give me shine it's going to be iridescent it's going to be shiny which is a really really good thing in nancy's book okay. so i've got nice coverage here maybe a little more than i needed i'm going to just roll that off onto my plate over here and I'm going to take the sunburst. Now with the sunburst, this is how I normally do my work. I put the paint down, I put the stencil down on top of it, I take a fabric, whether a brand new one or something I'm doing layering on, so this is the one I'm going to do some more layering on this. This one has a little bit of ombre going on. Free spirit solids, yes. <laughs> Look at Sue, we're working together, this is too fun. Um, what I use, Sarah, is a high-quality muslin. Sue Penn just mentioned that you can use a solid, existing solid fabric to get your base so that it already has color. Um, I actually like to have where I've got lots of layering and little stuff going on, so I can imagine doing it maybe with a batik that's got some, and I've done, um, where it's already got some design to it, whereas solid for me is just too solid. But will it work? Absolutely it will. So I just use a high quality fabric and I do not wash it ahead of time because I just am lazy. All right. So there. So I've got one done. Beautiful starburst on this one. Now I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to put this face down on something. I'm going to do it over here because I don't got enough room over there. Just get a little bit of that. Oh, no, I'm not. I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to take it, and I did this a lot last week. I'm going to take the wet side of the paint and put it down on top of the gel press. This is going to be a one solid pickup. Oh, man, I should have done that with that pink solid I have. Just thought of it. Right after I put it down, I thought of it, which is the way I work. Now, I love this because the paint was on the underside of this stencil, and it leaves it down on to the gel press. So now I'm kind of getting a ghost print or reverse print of the stencil, which is part of my layering process in this whole thing. Okay, so that's just going to hang out there for a little while because it needs to dry before I can pick it up. And we've got this guy with a beautiful stencil on it. Let's pick this one up so we can do one more like that. Oh, I know what. We're going to do one more like that, and then I'm going to do it on the pink, like I said. So this is what the sunburst looks like if it's just on. And this is a natural colored muslin, okay? not the bleached muslin, just because I have it. And so that's what I did. So I'm going to do another shade of blue. And you see how the plate starts to get accumulate some stuff? That's okay. It will accumulate, and sooner or later it'll come off onto some of my pieces. This time to add a little shine to this, I'm going to use, oops, I'm going to clean off my brayer. There. I'm going to use the, this is a kind of an iridescent one from Jacquard. This is called Highlight Violet. Love this. <laughs> Sue, somebody ordered your stencils. Somebody ordered your stencils. Yay! She said actually she had some pretty good sales from this, so... Be sure that you head to her Etsy page because you can do more than just the stencils, too. I mean, it's a great opportunity to get a lot of her beautiful fabrics um, at a discount and helping out the designer, which you don't get to do every day. But today is your day. You get to help her out. All right, so I'm going to put this one back down again on top. And this time I'm going to grab, oh, no, I'm going to grab this green again. So I've got creating my background, need lots more going on. So this time I'm going to grab it maybe just half of it here. And I wish that, you know, I had more room. If I weren't doing this on camera, I would have like three or four gel plates set up all over the place. So I could be doing this and picking up lots of different things all over the place. So now I have a half star and then I'm gonna take it the other half over here to this side. So this one's coming along. I've got a nice, good background, but I would want to add more to it. A um, couple of different things you can do, and I'll probably show them to you along the way, but I think I'll do those little leafy things next. Okay. 
So now I've got some starburst going around. Okay, some different guys. Gonna pick this one up. I'm gonna put him down part way here. I don't wanna touch through the stencils because I want that to stay um, with the design. I want that to be blank space in this whole thing. Ooh, that one turned out cool. Maybe another one up here. And it's just a whole lot of layering. Everything is about the layers. Um, and that's how you get such really cool, great, creative fabrics that make such fun quilts. All right, so I've got a lot going on there. Okay. Now, oops, I forgot to put, oh, I was going to put that pink fabric down. So I've got this almost solid pink. I'm going to put it down on top of this and just let it rest for a while. Okay. okay, while that one is resting, we are going to, I need this to dry. I can't do anything with this. So while it's drying with some, I want to add more to it. So I'm going to again take the Starburst. I'm going to put it on the gel press, press and I'm going to add with, so up here at the top that you can't see, I have a little craft mat that is attached to my Tim Holtz glass mat which is my favorite way to put my, um, which is why this looks, it's black. All right? I'm going to use just a regular sponge, and I'm going to sponge off over here on my craft mat, and then sponge right through the stencil. Okay, So I want it to be not super solid, honestly, which is why the um, sponge works so well. Because it, it gives it, yes, you can see the design, but it's not super solid because these are my backgrounds. These are not my final designs. Could they be? Sure they could, but that's not what I'm working on today. Okay, and maybe one up here. Okay, oops, got just enough room to get my sponge wet. All right, and then there's paint on this side. I'll put that maybe over here a little bit. So it's the reverse of what I just did. So I've got blue starburst. I've got gold starburst. I've got a light blue and a dark blue. I got a lot of little things going on here. Okay. Love that. Now, while this is drying, I'm going to show you how you can use the little, and well, let's do it on this. All right. Those little leaves and things. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here, and I'm going to use this little guy. I love these two. All right? These two are the ones that there's a bigger one and a small one, and they match up perfectly. Okay, I'm going to place it down. Remember how I had some white spots here? Well, they're not going to be white for long. Okay. I'm going to put this down here, and just because... Now, I got blue and gold, so I can't do blue and gold. So I'm going to put down gold first. Finding all my parts. Okay, a little bit more of this gold Lumiere over here. So normally I was putting down green or something first and then doing the gold. Well, I've got this blue, this really dark base, so I can't do it. So this time I'm going to sponge through the stencil directly onto the fabric. But again, not trying to do it too thick because we want to be able to sew through this when we're all done. Now, in truth, when the quilting that I did on the quilt behind me, when you'll see it again at the end, I um, I treated the larger the larger stenciled places, except the circles, more like an applique. So I actually outlined them and then echo stitched around them. Okay, so awesome. Okay, that one's looking great. Okay, let's go. I don't want to touch it too much over there, but I want a little bit more over here. I don't just want one. I want two. Then after this gold is dry, then I can take the smaller of these teardroppy leaf kind of stencils and then line it up and then put a whole nother color on top. So maybe I would then do green or dark blue or something like that. Um, so that you'll really be able to see it, like you could see in the ones that I showed you at the beginning. Okay, So that's how I can use these little stencils. And then what I have on here, yeah, I could put that down on here too. Play, 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 play. Love it. 
Okay. There. All right. So I'm going to put this one off to the side. That little one is still drying, so I don't want to do anything to it yet. I want to leave it there so that it's trying to pick up as much of that that I put down. Um, and this is almost drying. So while that is drying, I want to show you... No, I don't want to show this next. All right, nope, we're going to have to pull this up, and this is just going to have to be dried soon because I need a bigger space. So this was the sunburst that I first did the positive print pickup on the green fabric, which is right here. So this one did the light, the light blue positive print first, and then I put a pink piece down that I'd already painted pink with the light coat using just the gel press like I normally do. And honestly, if you want to know more about how this all works, there is a playlist on my channel for mono printing. You'll see it. And I've done lots and lots and lots of different variations on the themes, lots of different ways that you can get some really cool fabrics. So that's the one that I picked up from there. Remember how there was originally some gold on it? Yep. Now I've got gold. I've got some beautiful layering in this. Love that when that happens. Put this one over here. Okay, so are you dry? Are you dry? Okay, while that is drying, I want to show you something. So let me cap up some paints real quick here. Okay, because it's still drying. I want to show you some pictures up close. There. All right, so actually, no, I think I want you guys to be able to just see. I don't know why it does this. I want you to just see the big picture, but then sometimes it, okay, let me try that again. There, okay, let me start it from the current slide. So this is the quilt that I created with the fabrics that I painted yesterday for the most part. Um, and so what I did is these were done on an eight and a half but I'm sorry, an eight by 10 plate. So when I was done, I kind of trimmed them down to ish, eight and a half by 10 and a half ish. But then I added about a two inch strip of black all the way around. And by doing that, it gave me, it's kind of like a big coping strip. If you've ever watched any of my basic quilting videos, I do a lot of coping strips with that. And that's what this is. So this, and so then I was able to trim this down to, I think it was 10 and a half by 12 and a half. Then these big ones trimmed down to 14 and a half by 16 and a half. Then the backgrounds were honestly just the other fabrics that I painted that didn't turn out as stars. They were not the star pupil of the whole thing. So these cut up into beautiful little two and a half inch squares. I actually cut them into two and a half inch strips, sewed some strip sets together so that I could get, you know, combinations that work quicker. So I didn't actually have to do a whole bunch of two inch squares. Nobody wants to do that. And then ta-da, it was done. But what didn't happen is this guy, he's upside down. Those leaves are growing in the wrong way. Did not notice it until it was already basted and ready to be quilted. And at that point, I was calling that a fabulous accident. All right. So this is one that's close up that I did first, the kind of the different shades on the background. And then I used that teardrop stencil that I just used last time. And I did green on the bottom and then gold. But what I want you to see, and I hope it's going to show, is the difference between this one that is just painted and this one that is also outlined. Two things. So I did this one, I outlined it. But before that, whoops, oh no, I can't go backwards. Oh, I wanted to show you that there was some gold that I kind of sponged all over. This is one of the backgrounds that I did that's similar to the one that I'm waiting to add the fabric on the bottom. Um, it's got a lot of different layerings going on it. And then I put a silver on it and picked it all up at once. And then I used the stencil and created this on top of it. That's what we're going to get to next. And this shows a little bit of the quilting. So on the quilting, I actually went around each element as if it was applique, and then I did about a quarter of an inch echoing outside of that so that it really let those elements stand up, and then you can kind of see the rest of it. I just did meandering 
in the background. So here you can see just a little bit of the meandering. Yes, you can quilt on top of the paint. Even though with this particular technique, it's a little bit thicker, you cannot leave, this would be like, I don't know, a four inch or so circle. Can't leave a four inch circle unquilted. That would be the most bad thing. You can't do that. So I did do a quilting around each of the circles. And look at the black outlining. So this is something that Sue does in her video. You'll see all about that. And you'll see it when you see her fabrics too, where she does that. And this is another one with a smaller circle. But here I used this. Well, this one I did the way that I did the last one with the dark and then the gold. And then this one, I just used the little one and then followed it up with those dots. Love the dots. And that comes from um, in Sue's fabric. You'll see a lot of dots. And one of them is when she's doing... Um, uh, that tree of life kind of one. Sarah, the needle that I use normally when I quilt on a normal machine would be a 90 top stitch needle. Again, go back to my channel and look at some of my quilt quilting videos. I talk about all this kind of stuff all the time. But as you're going through my videos, you're going to see I just got a new quilting machine. And the new quilting machine has more of a, it's not a normal needle. It's not a long arm, but it is a long arm needle. Okay. This just showing you some of the quilting. So around all the little squares, you can also see a little bit more of the coloring on the squares. These were the not pretty squares, <laughs> not pretty fabrics, although that one turned out really, really cool. All right. So the next thing I want to show you, oops, I got to reach my escape button so I can get rid of that one. Okay, now I'm going to show you that in a little bit. So let's go back to the overhead. I'm ready to add the fat paint to this to pick this entire thing up. And to do that, I want it to be a color that's going to really show all of that. So I want to do, I should have been making this decision already. I'm going to do silver. We got gold down already. So we're going to use some of the Lumiere silver. Mm -hmm. And when you're putting the paint down, you know what I'm going to do before that? Hold on, paint. I'm going to take some of the fabric medium because I want it to be a little bit lighter. I don't want it to be too thick. And I'm going to just mix it in that jar. And I generally do this a lot. For all I know, I've already done it on this little silver one. Um, just because there's times when I want more playtime with my paint. Okay. And if I add the fabric medium... It'll give me, it'll dry slower. So it gives me a little bit more time. So I'm just carefully pouring out enough, probably too much because that's what I normally do is too much. I never quite know how much. Um, and I've been doing this a long time. So if you go, oh my goodness, I put too much on. Yeah, wait until maybe year 29 and maybe you won't anymore. I've been doing this for four or five years now and I constantly put too much paint down. Because with this, I don't want to blend it to the design below. I want this silver just to make a nice, even coat all over the top of this. And I'm not pushing my brayer down either. I'm just barely getting it. And I'm not going in both directions because that tends to blend the fabrics more than you want for this particular type of pickup print. All right, so he's all there. Now I'm going to grab myself... A large piece. Again, this is the 12 by 14 plate, which is the big daddy. He's the one that gives you the most. And I'm going to put that down. And while I'm doing the rest of these kinds of things, I'm just going to let that rest. Okay. And I did press this, although there's still a crease in this. I really do. Yeah, the pink would have been pretty. I thought about putting pink down first and picking it up, but I didn't think about it soon. And after, after I started dripping the silver down, all right, so that's what we have there. So let's say that we go back while this one's just cooking, cooking beneath. Let's start working with this. So with this, I'm going to use the circle. Now I could do and probably will do some of those little drop down guys, but this is what I really want to play with. Now, before I start playing with the circle in the leaves, I want to play with some of these dots because the dots are so cool. Um, do I get a little overly excited maybe sometimes? Well, maybe sometimes. All right, I'm going to put it on my plate because my plate is empty. I'm going to use that sea sponge that I had. And I'm going to just go right on through it. And the red is going to be quite brilliant, right? Brilliant. Uh, let's go maybe a little guy here below the sunburst. 
Sue, I hope you approve of my design. A little bit there. And then just like in everything, general, not everything, generally speaking, I like to use th do things in threes. All right. So I'm going to have, if I'm going to have something as bold as these red dots, I want to do it at least three times. And I'll just kind of smear this all over so that when I do the pickup on that, I can get some of this paint off there, which is always cool. Okay. Now I'm going to use the circle. So this is where I ran into a design dilemma. How do I do it? I don't have a full circle here. How am I going to fill in that circle? And this is what I came up with. I'm going to place it, I'm going to do it this way so I can kind of place it over here on top of this. But I can't do it uh, maybe right there. Okay, so he's going to be a little bit lower. Not sure, I might add something else to it. And the way that I figured out to make it work, dun da 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 with my paint pens. I have talked to you before about paint pens. I think, Sue, I use the um, Posca paint pens. I have some other variations. This is a Sharpie paint pen. I've got some of the Dilutions paint pens that are quite fine. Mostly the Posca paint pens are the easiest, and they've got a huge range of colors, a huge range of tips, and you can see them all at joggles.com. Okay, so I'm going to take my finer paint pens, so not the super fine ones. These are the ones from Dilutions. These have a very, very fine tip that you can just barely see. Um, and that can work because let's say I'm going to do green on the leaves. I can use it kind of like just a pen. But what is so important when you're using the paint pens, any brand, is you've got to be sure that what you're paint drawing on is completely dry. Okay. Otherwise, it clogs up your pens, and then you're just in a whole lot of sadness because then the pens stop working, and you go, what did I spend all that money on? Which, that's usually what happens with me. So that base was very, very dry. The red dots, I'm a little concerned with. I'm going to just try and stay away from them a little bit, and I'm going to do the outline. I'm going to make a large, no, I don't want a large blue flower. I want a large green because I have those blue sunbursts. So I'm going to use the green, kind of prime it over here. It's got a good shaker to it. You want to get it so that you know the paint is in the bottom. And the Poscas, although I've already used this one, they actually come with an extra tip. So if you do totally mess up your paint pen by trying to paint on something that is wet and it doesn't work anymore, you can swap it out for the new one that comes with that. But these fit perfectly inside the little slots. So I'm able to draw, and I'm going to skip right over that red dot because it's not dry, and I don't want this because this is already the second tip on this one. And let's say I'm going to do two, I'm going to do three layers, which, and this is how Sue does it in her video. When you watch the video that I put that link in below, you're going to see that she does this, but she draws this with a um, pencil. Because in hers, she's going to then paint it over top of it. So she's just drawing with pencil onto the gray, the dry um, thing. So I'm going to put my little guys away, get some of my big guys out, and take the stencil off now. Ooh, left a little bit of extra red because that red was still wet. Look at left extra red. I love that. Don't know if the rest of the world does or not, but I do. So now I'm going to go to my big, oops, I already had it right, my big Posca pens. And I'm going to grab my green one and this kind of gold one. Because for this, I want to put the paint on, but I don't want it to be super heavy. Because again, we want this to go on a quilt. So by doing it this way, it doesn't turn out too heavy, but yet it does mostly cover what is underneath, which is cool. I like that I can see through it a little bit, but in a second here you'll see how you can blend it too. These things are fabulous. And I tried doing this with a paintbrush and it got too thick when I was using the paint markers. Mm, mm, mm. So now I'm going to take this gold one and kind of fill in some of those gaps, and then I'm going to smear it together so that it's not just one solid 
fabric. And then you can even imagine how when you add a little bit of your black, you'll, you can use a little bit of the, uh, the finer ones to add some lines, some white for highlighting maybe as you go. So then from there, ooh, maybe I'll do the inside with, no, not with the gold because background's gold. But I have a darker, let's do this one. There's all these different tips. This one is the bullet point tip. The one I was just working on was the chisel tip. These things are awesome. Do, 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 do. And trying, you know, not making it filling it in like I'm being, you know, like a coloring artist where I want to fill in everything between the lines. Be free. Have fun. Remember, you can't mess up because it's art. <laughs> And you just can't. So now this one's a little bit bronzy to blend in with that brown a little bit. And you know, these, I am going over wet paint with these. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, she's messing up her pens. With the big ones, they don't do that. It's the little ones that do that. And then I would go to the middle with something. And on this one, I think I'm going to do, I'm, oh, that tip. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to go over here and find the cap to that pen that just flew across my studio. Okay. So here, same idea. I can do outlining and fill it in. I think you get the ideas. So I found the Posca paint pens to be fabulous for doing, working with the flourish stencil that Sue has. Okay. Oh, okay, I want to make sure these are all tight because I want to show you what's next. Once you get that all done, then you get to really start having fun. <laughs> Like as if this wasn't fun enough, right? And I know we're going a little bit long today. Let me get this one out of here. Put that guy down. And I want to grab that one that I did at the very beginning, showed you at the beginning. Here. All right. So with this one, I had already done the painting in of all of the things with the basic stuff. Now you get to see the amazingness of the black. So this is like the black fine. Nope, that's the gold one. Is this the black fine point? Nope, that's not as fine as I want. There, this one is pretty fine and will, could work, but I want the finer. Of course, now I can't find it because I'm looking for it. Is it that one? Nope, that's gold. And I might highlight with gold later. I'm just going to use this one. So the idea is you're just going to go around each of the elements. Now this one's going to be very bold because this is a bolder tip. I do have a finer tip one that I liked very much too. Just about like this. And then look at the difference. Look at how all of a sudden all the color stands out. Everything just pops right off. Um, love that. It makes the biggest difference in how these paintings with a specific element look. Now, I've used these Posca pens in the past on the mono printing plate, using it to do some plaid. So if you want to see it other ways that I've done it. So pow. Now that's really powing like that. But I mentioned that you can use a white. Got a fine tip. This happens to be a Sharpie paint pen. Not a regular Sharpie, but a Sharpie paint pen. And they kind of blob a little bit, so I want to get as much paint off of that tip as I can. Because I liked highlighting it. A little bit with the white in certain places especially on the leaves kind of where's the sun hitting them I sound like an artist don't I don't I Sue Sue don't I sound like an artist <laughs> all right and then the last thing would be adding dots definitely dots to the leaves so this is going to be a bright yellow I actually tried doing dots with the purple but you couldn't see them so when in doubt add more okay that's my motto always has been Okay, just like that. And so even the centers of them, maybe if I pick that up, you can see the center of those little berries. See how they come down? Now, there are still lots of ideas on Sue's fabric. When I was just looking at her fabric earlier, she used the small circles to make like what looked like little berry clusters. Um, there were so many cool things. So her fabric really helped me decide how I wanted to do it. I love this one. I think I might want to put something else up here. Don't know what it is. I'm an artist now. I'm an artist now. I have Sue's stamp of approval. Okay. So I, before I pull that last one up, I want to show you 
how this got designed in electric quilt. All right. So for those of you that are in my, I do have a um, membership, and my membership starts with the beginner level, which that's just a thank you for doing videos, Nancy. We appreciate them. The second level at only $9.99 a month is the designer level. And with that, I teach you how to do designing an electric quilt. So for those of you that are definitely in that particular category, what I did is I took photographs of the ones that I made. Then I used my image workshop. I imported that image. Um, I think it's on creative painting. So these are, okay, these are all the ones that I painted. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. Um, I don't take a picture of all of them, but I do take a picture of a lot of them. Um, actually, let's just do this one. So import something. Then I can resize it so that it's the size that I need. And I can't do that. Well, I could do it. This one came from an 8x10. I don't have my keyboard. Normally, I would just go in there and click that. Uh, do -do -do -do. There. So now it's an 8x10. Add it to my fabrics. Now when I'm designing and I go to my fabric tool over here on the end, there's that fabric. And so now I could place that in these little squares maybe. All right, but that's how I did the big ones. And then this, for those of you that have any idea what I'm talking about, and if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, then you might want to consider Electric Quilt. I was using the custom sets layout. And with custom sets layout, the idea is that I took that fabric and I just put it there. So this one was a 14 by 16. I took that photograph that I imported and just put it right there so that I could design the quilt behind me. Otherwise, I'd have been playing with it on, you know, how many squares do I need? So this is how it was done in electric quilt. So for those of you that are interested in electric quilt or already know a little bit, this is how I actually designed it. Um, some of you just are not into electric quilt at all. And the whole idea of designing your own quilts is like, no, I don't want to. I want to use a pattern. I want to use pre-made fabric, and I want to make things. Fabulous, because there's so many great patterns and so many great fabrics out there that you can do that. Um, you know, maybe painting on your fabric is like, I don't know, Nancy, you've gone a little bit far off the edge there. I love it. But then again, I've been quilting for 30 years. So maybe that's, you know, I don't know. I started this about six years ago. I know that there's a lot of, you know, acrylic and painty artists that want to get into quilting. This is a way that you can use what you already know from your acrylic and other artistry kind of stuff, which actually that's what Sue was. She was an artist, like a canvassy artist, before she was a fabric designer. All right, so let me look over here at some issues. Can you change out the nubs? Yes, you can. So on the Posca pens, they come with an extra nub, and you can change them out, and then you can get extra nubs later if you want. Just try not to write on wet paint, and then they don't usually clock. Um, grunge marks are great. Thank you. Um, all right, thank you very much. That was very sweet of you to say, Janice. All right, I don't think there's any other questions. So before I get to last, to say bye-bye, I want to show you what this last, hi, it's me. I know, we're going to get this fixed. My son says he's going to get me an overhead camera so that you won't have to see that. So this is the one that I made that background, and I'm hoping that, like Jana said, that it'll be kind of grungy. All right, now it's only been down for, what, maybe seven, eight minutes? It's not been down for a long time, and oh my gosh, is it awesome. It's got a little red. It's got a little blue. And when I get done with these, I take them over to the iron and I give everything a good hot press. Um, it help, makes it possible for me to work with them right away. Whereas if you just let it set for, you know, months at a time, then it'll be ready anyhow. You don't even have to worry about it. So technically it's heat setting it. Um, but oh my gosh, this is, this is perfect grunginess. I love the red. I, I can see the gold. I don't know what you guys can see. It's got a little bit of shine to it. This one is super duper fun. It's got those first patches that I did. So from this, I could then use the flourish and put the flourish on and get some more flowers and some different things on top of it. Super exciting. You know what I would maybe do? All right, I'm not going to do it right now, but I would maybe even take one of this to get one bolder sunburst before I started putting the other guy on it. So many options, right? So 
Thank you very much for joining me. I know this one went a little bit long. Oh my gosh, we hit an hour. Didn't plan on that happening. A um, lot of people, a lot of chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, stay tuned. Next week we will be continuing back to great, back to general quilting stuff. We'll be continuing the road home with a really cool kind of a log cabin sort of a block, and there's a whole pattern for that that will be available too. Remember, if you are a quilt member if you're a if you're a beginner member you don't have to do this but if you are a designer member you want to send me your email so i can send you the zoom link if you do want to learn do the zoom classes and if you're a quilt addict you want to send me your email so that i can send you the new patterns when i get a new pattern that's the final level you can um i send you every pattern that i have so you can find out more of that by clicking on the little join button below Remember, all of Sue's stuff is on sale on her Etsy shop, 10% off. You've got to use my special code to make it happen. Um, lots of stuff on there. Um, help support Sue so that Sue can keep doing that. I know that you don't want Sue to stop designing fabrics, so let's do what we can do to make it possible for her to be keep designing fabrics because they're so, so beautiful. Anything else going away? All right. I think that was it. Again, thank you very much for joining me. This is Nancy Ralsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy signing off. Happy New Year.